if you listen to Gun Owners Radio, you know how I feel about our current government and financial system. So it's no secret I'm a big believer in diversifying your money with precious metals like gold and silver. But when it comes to buying precious metal, you need the right company in your corner. That's why we partnered with the top-rated precious metal company, Gold Co., because reputation matters. Gold Co. is six times Inc. 5,000 winner for 2022 Company of the Year. They've helped people like you and me place over $2 billion in gold and silver. And right now they're offering gun owner radio supporters up to $10,000, $10,000 in bonus silver. 10 Gs. When opening a qualified IRA account. This is your opportunity to protect yourself from out of control, corrupt government. Don't pass it up. Grab your phone today and give Gold Co. a call. Take action today so you don't regret it tomorrow. Call Gold Co. at 855-612-6354. That's 855-612-6354. And tell them you heard about them on Gun Owners Radio. All right, new sponsor, Gold Fantastic. Co. Welcome, Gold Co. And I was glad to say they, they mentioned, you know, what is it, a IRA or a... Government corruption? Well, no, just oh. the fact that you don't have to put it in the trunk of your car. <laughs> well, that's true. Because that stuff could get heavy. That could get very heavy. I uh, Welcome Gold Co. Thank you so much for sponsoring. Everybody listening, check out Gold Co. Just call them up. Check out their website. Uh, see what the deal is. At, at the very least, spend five minutes calling them up and saying, hey, I checked out your website. Thanks to Gun Owners Radio. At the very least. But, uh, you know, if, if, if you're interested in precious metals, um, and you'll check never out. know until you call. Call, check out their their website, uh, check them out, help 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 support them so that they can continue to support us. Absolutely. I actually back when I was in banking, we had one client that would uh, yeah. he would uh, <laughs> it was so funny he would uh, he would he would take possession of of precious metals and he was a he was a, a fairly well to do doctor mm-hmm. and uh, he would use our bank as the because you know they they would just bring it to him they'd bring it like an armored you like know, a personnel carrier See, that's what i was talking <laughs> yeah. about what do you have I mean, oh my and god he, he'd come he had like a town car you know and he'd just throw and it in he'd, the trunk and he'd throw it in the trunk and his town car would be about six inches lower in the <laughs> back it was hilarious but he uh he, he i remember he came and he's like yeah all i want to do is i just want to meet in the parking lot i'm like what, okay. do you, what do you need the bank to do i mean it's not a bank transaction he goes no i just wanted to let you know I'm like eh, okay so every i don't know once a month or so this uh and did he put the gold in your bank no, it had nothing to do with us. Well, what did just, he want you to do? Just he, look at it? He just wanted to meet in our parking lot because we were a bank. Oh, when yeah. he was doing his yeah, business. And he was doing his thing, which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> did Way just, better. Did you just set him up and easy up? And... Yeah. Way better to go through Gold Co., everybody. Yeah, I go think, I think it's not the trunk of some guy's Lincoln. Hey, so a couple things coming up. Gun Prom. Go to gunprom.com. Buy your tickets before the early bird special uh, is uh, turns into a pumpkin. And goes away. And then Tuesday night, we're having our summer fling. Go to San Diego County Gun Owners dot com or stcgo dot org. Check out the information for our summer fling. It is Tuesday night. It's at the Valley High. Um, I, I think you can still uh, register and, and come, but uh, it's free. All you and by do the is- way, folks, if you've never done it because you think, eh, yeah, yeah, it is the, these events are so much fun. Yes, they are. I went. I don't get a chance to get out much since I live out in the sticks. Yep. But I went to the one last Tuesday with uh, Steve Cohen. Mm-hmm. It was an amazing, an amazing yeah. event. That was for Ten you, Ringers. You got to meet a lot of, oh, not everybody else can go to that. Well, yeah, you just got to become a Ten Ringer. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, and you know what, folks? Do it like I did it. Yeah. I have no idea that I belong to, to yeah. San Diego County Gun Owners. <laughs> you're a, you're, no, you're I have no idea. I just get surprised with invitations. Like I right. get Recall Magazine. And all I did is I put it on my credit card with yeah. an automatic deduct. There you go. No, yeah, you think, so that's, every you other... think that's funny. No, no it's no, no. dead serious. Well, I think it's funny that, you, <laughs> I that you're you. confused by it. But it works. The, every other month, we have a guest speaker and a, uh, a happy hour. We had the sheriff. We had a guy from SEAL Team 6. We had Steve Cohen, uh, the uh, station manager for KUSI. Uh, we're going to continue to have these guest speakers every okay. other month. And then every other other month, we have uh, sporting clays for 10 ring members. Plus, we have some other cool stuff. Hey, so you know what I saw is, uh, you know who Steve Breen is? Do you know who Steve Breen is? Oh, the is? artist. No. Steve Breen from the Union Tribune. Yeah, the artist. You know? so the he's, cartoonist. He's a cartoonist, right. Okay. He he used to make 
he basically before the internet he he would draw memes right so right. there'd be like a big news story yeah and he'd draw some meme with like a political message on it and they'd print it in the ut right you know so he's retiring not a fan not a fan of his you're not no beat it steve beat it i think his whole career was destructive to political uh but he was discourse. a good artist well, he can draw cartoons. That's what I like. You know, whoop de doo. I I used to. I've said for years. I didn't agree with all of them either. Trust me. Well, and it's not so much that I disagree, although he's he was vehemently anti Second Amendment, well, which yeah. I don't like. Right. But even if he was, even if he was pro Second Amendment, even if I agree with every single thing, I think that what he did was, um, was was just absolutely. And here I thought this was coming across it. positive. No, absolutely <laughs> not, Steve Breen. Don't let the door hit you. I think that his whole career was a was kind of a was was a ridiculous joke. Um, I, I I've for years have said that Steve Breen his he is to politics what little pictures of Big Macs on on cash registers are to the American workforce. You know I don't know if you remember back in the '90s there was a whole big thing like basically McDonald's and all these fast food places they couldn't find people smart enough. To work the cash register, so they had to so rather than like do math or whatever or even read, they just had to put little pictures of Big the Macs. Big Mac, mm-hmm. oh, order a Big Mac. Here's cheese. a picture of it. Just hit it. And that's 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 what Steve is to politics. I thought he he was, you know, he didn't explain anything. He didn't go yeah. into any well, depth it was on his anything. Opinion. It was his little opinion, his right. snarky little, you know, pictures. And for I I never understood. And I'll tell you the way I found him. You know, he was kind of just you know plotting along there, and you know, he kind of in the background of, of my life. And everybody seems to just think he was great. And then someone sent me some one of his Second Amendment, uh, anti Second Amendment ones, and of course I didn't like that. Um, but then I started looking at his work, and I'm like, this is a joke. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, everybody out there, you got people writing op eds. You have experts. You have journalists that are trying to get to the bottom of things, trying to educate people, trying to. You know, if you, he, you know, we're not better uh, today than we were 30 years ago when it comes to political discourse. And I think it's it's stuff like it's basically Steve Breen's entire career um, is one of the reasons. So I, I didn't understand that. I don't but understand why know, everybody. You know why he's leaving? Because paper's dying. The paper got bought. <laughs> oh, that's right. And yeah. the paper, the people that bought it, the people that bought it. Are gonna just? I mean, the paper's already basically destroyed. But I had a really good inside scoop on it that, that the people that bought it—that's why he left. What are they, what are they just, they're just gonna deme- de- what, what are they gonna? How can you two minutes? You how, how, how can you make it any worse than yeah. what it already is? How can you destroy what's already uh, been, been destroyed? Destroyed. I mean, wh- what are they gonna do? Uh, I haven't got any. They're gonna make them start reporting facts. I mean, what? Oh no, no, no! It's gonna be it's gonna be just as hardcore left as you can even imagine. I thought they were owned by the L.A. Times. They were. He sold it. That doctor sold it. L.A. Times sold it to somebody else. Yeah. He's gonna make it even worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now they're only gonna have two hundred subscribers. One minute instead of a thousand. Well, there you go, Alicia. We're gonna have to find something else to wrap our fish Fish in. in. No, we always used to call it that, the fish wrap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you ever read the paper? Yeah. The funnies? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let's be real. Keep it honest, yeah. Keeps the stretch. Yeah. That and, uh, you know, it's uh, you know I need browns for my uh, compost. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Totally get it. So we, got, we actually have a big show coming up. We're going to interview a guy named Don Mann. He used to be a, a SEAL um, and uh, for the U.S. Navy. And uh, we have all kinds of, we have a lot of local updates coming up here. So mm-hmm. your guy that keeps texting you and saying that he wants more local, Dave, we this, got it. Yeah, we've been killing it with local lately. Today's so. the day. Yeah, tell him to stop. Tell him to stop whining. Hey, if you own a gun in California, you should have an attorney that specializes in California gun laws. On your speed dial, by the way, because if you ever have legal matters that involve firearms, you need California's firearm lawyer, John Dillon. Especially if you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation. Or maybe you just need to know that your guns are California compliant. Our trusted firearms attorney is John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Put his number on your phone right now. 760-642-7150. That's John Dillon, California firearms lawyer. 760-642-7150. So I don't know if you heard, but there was a very sad and, and, and horrible tragedy in Fallbrook about a week ago last Monday. A three-year-old found somehow i don't we don't have all the details there's still oh, an investigation yeah, yeah, yeah. 
A three-year-old found a loaded firearm and shot their, I believe it was his sister, who was one years old. Obviously, she did not survive. Um, Which, uh, on Tuesday, when when uh, when we were at the uh, county board meeting, um, that came up a lot. And as as if anything that the county was proposing would have uh, helped. Yeah. So, um, you know, we don't comment on a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, when we first started Sandy County Gun Owners, anything happened, and, and we'd issue a statement. And I'm like, you know what? It doesn't make sense that we're not, we're not associated with these problems. You know, we're the solution. We're not the problem. We don't, we don't need to mm-hmm. comment on every bad thing that happens in the world. So I, I, I stopped uh, doing that because I, I felt like it almost fed into it. You know, if there was some kind of, you know, mass murder where a gun was involved mm-hmm. and, and we, you know, feel the need to apologize for it, which we never did, but that's, it kind of felt that way, right? Like we are somehow, it felt like we were we were uh, taking responsibility for it, which we're not. That's, that has nothing to do I with I would us. wait for them to come to you for a comment, like news media, TV. Yeah, and I, but yeah, anyway, so I, I just, I just kind of, but we did issue a statement here and I wanted to, I wanted to read the statement. Uh, storing your firearms where kids can't reach them isn't just a good idea. It's the law, and failure to do so should be prosecuted to the fullest extent possible. Um, it continues on, but, well, let me just keep going. Yeah, New, with news reports say that a three-year-old child in Fallbrook obtained a loaded firearm and used it to tragically take the life of a one-year-old sibling on July 17th. There is no excuse for such a tragedy, and it is never okay to allow such a young child to access a loaded firearm. There are still so many questions to answer. Where were the parents? Why was the firearm unsecure and within reach of a three-year-old child? What is without question? This is with, uh, what is without question is this is a violation of California Penal Code twenty-five one hundred, which makes it illegal to store a firearm where a child has access to it. And SDCGO is supportive of this law. No matter where you reside in California, you cannot store a firearm in such a way that a child can use it. Owning a firearm is every Californian's right and a great responsibility. And making sure that children are safe from your firearm is the responsibility of each gun owner. In addition, the county of San Diego passed a storage law that applies to the unincorporated areas of the county, including Fallbrook. The county's regulation was sold to voters as a, quote, solution to tragedies like Fallbrook's recent tragedy, requiring firearms to be secured by lock or safe at all times unless the gun owner is actually touching the firearm. SDCGO opposes this additional storage law because it potentially hinders people from using their firearm in self-defense. It is far too intrusive, and it doesn't do anything additionally to help kids because we already have Penal Code 25100, and it doesn't work as evident by the horrible tragedy. So what would work? As a group, gun owners in the United States have an excellent record of safety and are law-abiding. Carry permit holders, for example, commit fewer crimes than the general population and fewer crimes than police. It is rare that an accidental life is taken, but it is so sad and tragic when it happens, it is important to strive to do better. Additional education on best practices for gun owners and youth, and that education should be presented by respected Second Amendment organizations so gun owners will listen. Yet another law, AB 2571, signed by Gavin Newsom, prevents respected groups from advertising classes of any sort that would educate children on what to do if they ever found a firearm. In the same way children are taught to stop, drop, and roll in case of fire, responsible gun owners teach kids to stop, don't touch, leave the area, and tell an adult if they find a firearm. We will never know if a class would have helped a three-year-old, but we do know education on stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult has helped kids when they are able to hear that message. San Diego County Gun Owners is calling for an investigation and prosecution of the responsible parties to the fullest extent of the law, enforcing this existing state law that requires firearms to be stored in such a way that children cannot access is important to the law's effectiveness and every single gun owner should be educating their children regardless. More so, AB 2571 should be repealed so that we can more effectively teach kids what they need to know to stay safe. Instead, anti-gun owner laws by extremists in office aren't helping our children. In fact, they're hurting the very ones we mean to protect. Mm, Very good. So the statement there is whoever 
is responsible for, for letting a three-year-old have access to a firearm, mm. whether intentionally or unintentionally. Need to be prosecuted. Should be prosecuted. Absolutely. 100%. Yep. And, uh, and this, this law that prevents us from, from teaching kids needs to be overturned. Because, you know, they, Tuesday when we were in front of the county board, there was all this talk of, well, geez, this, this horrible tragedy just happened. See, we need to, you know, we need to, we need to pass more yeah, gun laws, gun laws, storage, right. gun locks, whatever. There were at least two laws already in Fallbrook. One that was state level, which means that no kids can access, no prohibited people can access. And two, the county already passed a regulation and, you know, it didn't work. Yeah, but see, 10 laws are better than one law. Yeah, I know. And they can all be the same. It's I know. It's okay. really, really, really illegal. That's because we're really, really stupid, and they just don't think we can read one log and understand it. These legislators, I think, are the same parents that give their kids the count of three before they have to listen. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. Because, uh, you know, the first time you tell them, you don't really expect them to listen. That's so true. You know, you got to give them, like, two, three before you actually yeah. expect them to, to comply. That's a good idea. But I, I think this is I, I, this was a unique um, situation. I think it warranted a statement. And I believe our statement of, you know, prosecute the, the person at fault, right. um, you know, that we do support uh, the, the penal code that prevents people from we've storing firearms. We've fire never armor. not supported. Well, I, I, there's the one law. thing is, um, you know, the other side, the anti-gun folks, the Moms Demand Action and the Brady organization, there isn't a gun law out there that's been proposed that they didn't love. You know, there's, they've, there's not one time right. that they've said, well, this one goes too far. We don't even support Oh, this no, one. no. The more you the merrier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, on the other hand, are the reasonable ones where we say, hey, you know what? Okay, that law is not too intrusive. This other law, that's too intrusive. Right. But this law, not too intrusive. You know. And I think it was important to make that point. And Alicia's got an excellent idea. What's that? The next time you go before a city council, mm -hmm. you ask the question three times in a row. And they're going to want to know why you did that three times in a row. <laughs> he says, well, you're like a child. You know? <laughs> we have to ask you three times before it will sink it. Don't you think that's a good idea? Yeah. Would I be thrown out? No. Yes, I would. No, you should try it. I should? Yeah. I like the other one just staring at him. <laughs> I still think that would have been a good one. I really <laughs> do. Well, what did you think of the statement, though? Do, do you oh, think, I think it was, it was an important well, point to make? That's one thing. Well, your passion really comes out. When it's important. It really is. That's why I like your mic drops. I know they take you forever to do, but they're so on point because you really think out the topic, no matter what it is, whether you're driving over a bus with somebody or driving somebody over with a bus or even giving accolades. You really do think it out extensively before you speak. Which I think is what everybody should do. Well, and I think this statement did did exactly that. I totally, I trust me, I totally agree. I think a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, oh no, 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 stay away from the no, oh, no, no, you we can't. need to, this is the yeah, you, you, this is something you need to absolutely. This is the crucial time to stand yeah. up and, and give. You a can't voice. pick your battles in situations like this. You got to do, yeah, you, know, you got to talk about them, and you can't just show up at the easy ones. No, 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 because everybody will know that the minute the minute it happens. Now I don't. We don't have all the details. No, there's. I'm sure. Yeah, but come on. But what, what detail what could, could possibly well, yeah, exist? Yeah, the um, But I got to tell you, th th this is, you know, and who knows? I have no idea, you know, the parents. I don't know if they were, who knows? But, you I, know, I, here, stop and think. Alicia could appreciate this. Kids can get into everything. Oh, absolutely. Here's a little kid that finds a, a weapon and figures not only how to shoot it, but aimed. I mean, it is yeah. insane when you stop. Stop and think about it. Well, I do. Uh, so, you know, they, they're trying to, these gun storage, gun locks, gun storage, you know, safes, et cetera. They don't stop criminals. No. If a criminal finds a gun with a lock on it, guess what he does? He takes the lock off. Well, I mean, <laughs> That's hello. it. You know, and okay, now he's got a gun. It doesn't stop criminals. No. Nobody, there's not a criminal out there that would find a gun and go, oh, it's got a lock on it. Oh, well, I'll come back. Oh, oh yeah, this is really at the house. I don't want to be. <laughs> so the gun locks, gun, and safes take, oh, I don't know, 48 seconds to pop open. Everybody, all safes do or, or keep real honest people honest. That's it. You know, um, so they don't stop criminals. They don't stop people that are committing suicide. No. You know, maybe there's a case to be made. That if uh, if you have your, your two minutes your firearm secured and someone wants to use your firearm to commit suicide and they can't get to it, maybe there's a case to be made. But if you're if you want to use your firearm to commit suicide, you just take the lock right off. I do think that storage 
In fact, I know that this isn't a theory. Store, you know, a locked firearm uh, it is good. You know, you can't, kids keeping it away from kids. That's all it's good. That's for. all it's good for. And that's really mm-hmm. what the intention was. Well, I was so. talking to somebody the other day about guns, and and they were saying uh, it was a kid I had on KUSI TV because I was promoting, not BSD, and I was promoting Thank know, you. our program. Sure. And he goes, you know, when I was little. He says, I was taught at a very, very, very young age. You see it, you don't touch it. Yeah. And he says, that, that as I grew up, I could walk by and see a gun on a table. I didn't think nothing of it. But what do you do with, to a child if you say, don't touch that and hide it? Mm-hmm. They're going to go look for it. Because you got them excited. You want to know, what, what is it? One Why minute. Why can't I look at it? Why can't I play with it? But if you expose them to them and teach them, it's not a toy. Don't touch it. And do it realistically. Then he told me as he grew up, he says he, you know, and he shoots to this day. He says, but when I was a kid, I never touched it. I never fooled with it unless we went to the range. Think about that forbidden wing in any movie. That's where the people always want to go. Yeah. When you get off limits, they're going to want to find it. I know. It's the weirdest thing. Anyway, that's right. our statement. You can find it on our website. We <laughs> sent it out via email. It's covered by press a little bit. Um, Just a little bit. Oh, KUSI. But I, I really, truly, we are going to uh, continue to follow up on it and, and see the details and make sure that uh, the, the guilty party is prosecuted. And I, I'll tell you, the anti-gun folks won't do this. No, 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 no. Nope, they'll just want another law. Because they're, it's, they're, they're not, there's zero sincer- sincerity. With That's them. exactly right. Orange County Gun Owners is dedicated to preserving and restoring Orange County self-defense rights. And if you live in Orange County and want to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, you need to join OCGunOwners.com slash join. Orange County Gun Owners is the organization to help get more pro-gun or pro-Second Amendment officials elected. Become a member today. OCGunOwners.com slash join. OCGunOwners.com slash join. So I talked a little bit about it in the last segment. Um, We, uh, on Tuesday... Uh, the county board had the, had had a meeting. It was actually their last meeting of the session. They get a, did you know they get a summer break? I know. What are they doing for the summer? Well, not only that, Congress takes the whole month of August off. <laughs> well, anyway, so they took a summer break. Um, but at the last session, um, they uh, they had a, a presentation of the for the county board, um, and it was you know the listening sessions and that report. It's 204 pages for the gun violence. Buried production. that thing already. Well, we're getting there. So no, we, I figured they would bury it because they don't want anybody to see it. Well, the, well, no. So they they thought it was great. The anti gun people thought it was great. They had they came up with a number of suggestions. Um, so what they did is they said, "All right, well, we got this 204 pages, and uh, um, the uh, uh, they had some a number of recommendations." Um, so what they were, what they called for was to accept the report, including the recommendations. Now the recommendations were were not well presented mm-hmm. to the public, right? right? Which is usually the case. Usually the case because they don't want people to, you know. Well, they don't even want you to read them. But here it was. They had they actually had three um, phases of of recommendations. They had you know short term or immediate, and then like a midterm, and then you know long term. Mm-hmm. And the first, the short term, well, and they were all kind of dependent upon each other. Mm-hmm. Um, this wasn't like a well, here let's pick and choose. It was here's this whole big program, you know. Either you know, if, if you put if you hit go, you're, you, the whole thing's coming. So the first part of it was just kind of setting up infrastructure and didn't actually require any money, and so it all looked innocuous. That's what people kept saying. Oh, this looks innocuous. I don't know. It doesn't look that bad. Um, but the reality is that they, that was just setting up the infrastructure. Yeah. So they had a bunch of recommendations. Some of them were like, you know, we're going to have, you know, the county's going to provide free gun locks. So if you contact the county, you can get a free gun lock. Well, you already do that. You can do that with the sheriff. Not only that, but what happens, Alicia, every time you buy, when you buy a gun, what do you got to do? They make you buy a lock. They make you buy a lock. Can't leave the building without it. No, there are some manufacturers that provide them, but the, for those that don't, you're required to buy one. And you, and you can't even bring one that you have already at home unless you bought it in the last 30 days and you have your receipt to prove when you bought it. Why does it have an expiration date on it? Apparently. Well, yeah. <laughs> so you have to, so gun lock, whatever. You know, maybe that one is, is innocuous, but... The rest, it was like setting up panels 
And, uh, you know, there's a basically all every every suggestion that had the word gun violence in it, you know, was anti gun. <laughs> it's really what it turned out. They wanted to set up departments and processes um, and procedures, you know, that was basically setting the, the, the stage for phase two and then eventually phase three. Right. And what they were looking to do is have this huge countywide effort to reduce gun violence. Uh, basically, everything was going to be seen through the lens or prism of gun violence. Every, uh, you know, they have these solutions for gun violence rather than a solution for violence or a solution for suicide or a solution, you know, to try to better society. Right, it was just right. going to be all about guns. And so my point, uh, you know, was basically everything that, that they set up today, we, we will be fighting the messaging and the uh, policies for the next 20, 25 years. Oh, without a doubt. So got to vote against this thing. Yeah. This is not, Are you they going to try to put this up for a vote? So they, they did. <clears throat> and, but, and what they did, it's the, the county board votes on it. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they had a bunch of, they had, I don't know, 30, 30 or so of the anti-gunners show up. Um, and uh, I got to tell you, man, they were basically taking a victory lap. I mean, it was, they, they were just assuming this thing was going to pass. And it was all the phrasing was, you know, well, once this is passed, you know, you know, and hey, thank you for voting for that. We'll hey, be fine. Gonna, yeah, this is all going to solve everything in the whole world. Um, and there were some really sad stories. You know, some people came and said, hey, you know, my, my, my family member was the victim of gun violence and died. And that's all very, very sad and tragic. It truly is. Without a doubt. But one of the things that really stood out is there was a recently graduated girl. She just graduated from high school. And basically, it was, we need to get rid of gun violence. You guys need to pass this thing so that we can get rid of gun violence. Because everybody in school, you know, grade 1 through 12, is terrified of school shootings. Now, (laughs) which is... Okay. Okay, but they're terrified of school shootings because the anti-gun groups make them terrified of school shootings. You know, a school shooting is so enormously rare. Right. It's so complete. And the problem is they've, they've, uh, um, they totally misrepresent the numbers. You know, oh, well, there's been 200 mass shootings, and, and 47 of them have been school shootings. When the reality is, if you look at these mass shootings, they're not what you and I would think of as a mass shooting. Right. When you look at the school shootings, they're not what you and I would think of as a school shooting. A mass shooting, anytime someone three or more, you know, Jesus, fires up again. Yeah. Now, if, if that could be two gang members, you know, or two gangs going, you know, a drug deal gone, and bad. nowhere near a school. Well, or so that's so that's a mass shooting, right? So you know, you got you got two gangs go head to head. They shoot at each other over a drug deal gone bad, and they call it a mass shooting. That's not what anybody would consider a mass shooting, no, no. Ex- unless you're trying to ban guns, right? Uh, and then the school shooting part, Dave. To your point is, now let's say that those two gangs meet. A hundred feet from a school at midnight on a Saturday night, when there is no school in session, right in the summer when there hasn't been school in session for a month, that's a school shooting. See what I'm saying? Two gangs shoot at each other, right? You know, a hundred feet from a school, right? In the middle of the night when there's no school going on, they consider that a school shooting. That's not what the rest of the world. The solution for school shootings, you know. It, it is not, and, and the solution for gangs, uh, gang, you know, on gang violence are completely different. Totally different. So, <clears throat> this poor girl has gone through her, you know, grade one through twelve scholastic scared career, to death. scared to death, not because a school shooting is a realistic possibility, but because the other side is using it as a political, uh, you know, uh, political tool, right, to try to pass their agenda. So, let me ask you this. What, how much horsepower would this be if you went to them and said, okay, you're going to pass this and that's going to eliminate gun violence? Great. You know what? Sign this document that says exactly what you said. Guarantee the city of La Mesa, the city of San Diego, that if you do this, there'll never be another mass shooting. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but, well, I mean, they won't do that, of course. No, but you at least you've got to bring it up because then you'll push them back on their heels 
and say, oh, well, uh, you know, we can't guarantee that. Well, I do think that... that but some, they think it will. I think these laws need to sunset. And I, it would, I think it would be nice if, even if we're in the minority, you know, the, uh, the pro-gun, the pro-Second Amendment folks are in the minority. I think that there are ways to uh, force some of these laws to sunset <clears throat> and say, all right, you know, okay, so you're going to pass this law and it's going to stop gun violence. Define that. You know, oh, well, it's going to bring it down uh, 50% or 20%. You, gar- you guarantee this. Well, so so then, you know, well, three, okay, three years from now, if it hasn't done that, it needs to go away. That's even you better. You know what I mean? Like sunset it. I would rather put him in jail if it fails, but <laughs> sunset's probably better. What would you think? Let me ask you this. <laughs> it's probably, you're right. It's probably better, Dave. <laughs> put him in jail. What, what would you think? A pro-Second Amendment uh, city council member, let's yeah. say. Or, or a county board member, whatever, an elected okay. official, and they're pro-Second Amendment. Okay. Um, they vote for some anti-gun process, procedure, whatever, mm-hmm. um, because um, the the anti-gun folks that proposed it agreed that if it doesn't hit certain you know, metrics in three years, that it'll sunset. Right. Would you be mad at the, uh, at the, uh, at the elected official? What do you think, Alicia? Would you be mad at them for doing that? Two minutes. That's a deep one to think about. Really I, have, I, I, I feel huh? both ways. So well, because I feel like I feel like it's giving in. Yeah, and I feel like that could be something that could be used as fodder later. So you agree they should go to jail? <laughs> <laughs> well, they they got to go somewhere. So, but but in and back to the point that you were talking about about that girl who's got fear of school shootings. That yeah. uh, you know what I think of when I think of that is I think of they're planting seeds of fear so that future generations are going to continue continue what they've begun. And where are their parents 100%. correcting that fear? I mean watching the news. Watching the yeah. news, exactly. But <laughs> living into the fear. But but, but about it oh gosh, I don't know how I feel about that. Well I, you think about it because we've got to take a break. Yeah. Oh we're not done yet. I think the, you know the right thing to do One is minute. obviously they need to vote against it. Right. But if if they know this thing's gonna pass it's almost like it's like playing political chicken. Yeah, you know, because you know, if you your confidence going to fail, therefore in the end you get what you want. But I feel like th- they they could have a move in the in the wings that you don't know, and you're feeding in and you're well, giving them an advantage. You know, right. there's underlying something around it. Have yeah, they well, voted on it yet? So they we're gonna we're gonna talk about it in the next segment. We have, we we're gonna talk about this for two seconds, Dave. A little <laughs> bit of suspense, <laughs> yeah. huh? You got me on the edge so, of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nobody did that. I haven't actually seen that maneuver yet. Where you know, uh, trying to sunset. The only uh, that's a good one though. The only one that I've seen is uh, back in '94 when they did the federal assault weapons ban. Uh, they, they sunset that sunset you, sunset it in 2004. But it stopped hundreds and thousands of killings. <laughs> yeah, right. Ask Biden. <laughs> You, you know there was a study, right? Yeah, and and it, and it did nothing. Z- zilch. No, no, zero. no, no. Biden said it, it eliminated hundreds of thousands of deaths. Piece of cake. Whatever. I know. I like Sunset. Crazy joke. No, I think we should put him in jail. (coughs) But okay. Let's take a break. Hey, have you ever wanted to get a pilot's license? Well, here in San Diego, pilots can fly almost every day, which makes San Diego one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. Learn to fly with San Diego Flight Training International. Check out these deals just for gun owner radio listeners. One hour of ground school, one hour of flight with the instructors. Yep, you get to fly. Normally $400, but for us listeners, $350. Getting started is easy. Give them a call at 858-569-1822 or just go to SDFTI. But I would call them, 858-569-1822. So we were talking about the uh, what happened at the county board on uh, last Tuesday, and we were talking about how you know, they were throwing everything at the, at the wall, every little thing. One of the, so they were talking about, you know, kids and high schools and school shootings and everything. And they also talked a lot about, you know, what we talked about in the last segment, which was, was what happened in Fallbrook and, and, and kids and that sort of thing. And one of the things I brought up was reversing, what is it, AB? AB 2571. So talk about, Alicia, why does that inhibit? So AB 2571 was, was a measure that was brought for that, uh, if you read it, it talks a lot about products. It prohibits marketing, advertising, attracting anything that youth, in, in a way that youth would be attracted to anything related to guns. The, the verbiage reads a lot dealing with products, gun products, firearm products. But if you read deep down, there is a section 
um, down in 22949.80 that reads that any person, firm, corporation, company, partnership, society, et cetera, et cetera, has a big long list that uh, has that encourages the use, purchase, ownership of firearms, and uh, also encourages events where firearm or products related to firearms are used are prohibited. So you cannot to kids. So you can't, to kids. So you can't market a safety class for children. The NRA has the you know the the the, the uh, I Eddie forget Eagle. his name Eddie the Eagle as as their little their um, their advocate to youth to kind of encourage gun safety. Nope. Um, you can't teach in a way. You can't use anything caricatures, anything cartoony, anything that would be attractive to youth as training materials and courses on flyers to try to encourage kids to come to, to or you know parents to sign their children up for youth safety classes. Um, many uh, rifle shooting clubs um, have were in, uh, were afraid of, of being non-compliant with this with this ruling and and this measure, and so they feared fines, and so they no longer will call themselves, for example, youth rifle shooting clubs or things like that. Well, there used to they be a still lot exist. of those in school. And well, yeah, that that's been gone for a while. You know, back when I was in high school, I t- we shot rifle right in the classroom, uh, but. Uh, so these classes, these trainings are still happening, but as instructors, we can't market them, we can't label them, we can't say, hey, parents, let's teach your children about gun safety. I know when I teach youth, before I teach them anything about the firearm itself, we do have a talk and a discussion about, first off, if you see a gun, you don't touch it. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we go over all that. Right. I don't just don't dive right in like, you know, hey, this is what you do, this is how you use it. We have a discussion first, and then we move into when you have permission, you have you have a parent there with you. You're working with an instructor. When you're in a in a uh, situation to where you have authority to be able to be doing this, mm-hmm. this is how we handle it. Mm-hmm. So we, go, you know, I go over all of that with them. But um, as an instructor, we can't proactively find ways to uh, let parents know that these avenues exist to teach their children about gun safety. Parents can bring them. Parents can uh, approach the instructors, but instructors cannot Can't approach the correct. Thing. And so, you know, there are a lot of parents. I know I've had a couple of parents reach out to me uh, through my through email. I'm not sure how they find me, but they find me and they say, hey, I'm looking for this information for my kids. I'd like to take them to a safety class. I can't find one anywhere. And so that's why you can't find them anywhere. They do exist, but they can't be advertised. And so it was a, it's a missed opportunity to teach children to be respectful and safe to teach them respect for firearms. You know, you mentioned growing up, when you grow up around them, you have a healthy respect for them. When they're hidden and tucked away, they become, there's kind of like a cool factor a that you want to you want to try to discover, right? Right. So, that's so they let, they won't, <laughs> it just makes me know. That like, doesn't make any sense. They don't does prohibit it? us from <laughs> teaching them, but they prohibit us from uh, advertising and letting it be known that it's available. Now, every time they say, oh, no, 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 we're not against gun ownership. We just want it to be safe. Mm-hmm. Th- that's completely untrue. A lie. And I'll tell you, that was another thing. They were walking around Tuesday, and they had shirts. They, they said that a lot. Oh, I'm not against guns. We're not against Second Amendment. What did that orange shirt say? I couldn't read it from the, the Well, the, the orange the shirt had a gun on uh-huh. it and a big circle and a cross through it. Okay. <laughs> so, he had oh, the, that's not anti-gun. So, that's not anti-gun. <laughs> the view that I saw had a monitor blocking blocking the view of his shirt, but people kept referencing it. I was curious what it said. Yeah, it just, okay. it, it was, it just knocked it the monitor no gun. So you can't, you can't even... Encouraging... Uh, you know the ownership of firearms or even you know going through a safety class completely ridiculous so listening to all this over and over and over again I mean again I feel for people who went through some kind of tragedy and 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 you know they feel like you know this has got to be a solution or whatever I totally feel for them um, but the suggestions were, were just absolutely ludicrous the uh, uh, so they finally did do the vote Dave and okay, it, I'm ready. it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, uh, Joel Anderson and Jim, Jim Desmond voted against it, and the other two voted for it, which means it didn't pass. Oh, good. Um, so the other side, uh, uh, what's your name? Tara. Mad? Oh, God. They were so mad. And Did Tara, they really think Desmond and Anderson was going to vote against it? Well, here's why. I th- no, f- for, for it. I think they thought it was, they were going to vote because of the way they set this thing up. So, like I said, if you look at it, it, it was, it, first off, the, the people they hired were so biased, it's ridiculous. In no way were they doing real science. Is this another research. good reason why Nathan Fletcher is gone? This is another. If Nathan Fletcher was there, this would have passed. Yeah, that's my point. And gone mm-hmm. into motion. Uh, you know, period. But the uh, they set it up in such a way, it was, you know, this whole frog 
boiling thing, right? The frog in the right, water. Frog in the water. Yeah. Right. So that this first section was like, ah, it's not so bad, you know. Ah, it's not, eh. Yeah, it's a little that, warm, but it's the, okay. Yeah, by the time you get to the third phase, <laughs> yeah, all it's of a sudden, bubbling. everything you do, and it's this kind of you. So you. The, so what? So what's their alternative? What are they? Because they got something else in the in the works. What are they going to well, do? Well, I, I think that uh, I think that they may try to reintroduce this thing once they get a fifth county county board member. And who is that going to be? Well, it's probably going to. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see, but. Uh, the, uh, you know, they, on, you, there's so many contradictions. They can't say that they're they're just about gun safety and then ban gun safety lessons to kids. You know, they can't say, hey, we got we have to do something to help kids and then have a state law preventing you from telling kids how to be safe around guns. But see, there again, both things can't there be true. again. When when you confront them with that, what do they say? Uh, no, I mean. David, they're not reasonable people. I know. Well, you know they're not I mean? going to make sense. I they're can't, not. <laughs> we deal with non reason. I mean, mm-hmm. I can it's, make sense. I, I can tell right. you one of the things when in front of La Mesa, in front of uh, the county board, uh, one of the things I, I did point out was, you know, on the one hand, they say, hey, these gun locks, they, they prevent suicide because uh, if someone just, if they just, just limits the, you know, just holds them up for just a second, they think about it before they commit suicide. You know, taking this lock off, it just, it just pauses. It gives them a little bit of extra time to rethink suicide. Then it'll it'll prevent suicide. And then on the other side, they say, "Oh no no no! These locks are so easy. You, you know, if someone's attacking you, it's not going to prevent you from defending yourself." All both, in the same breath. Yeah, both <laughs> things can't be true. I had a friend of mine who was diagnosed with cancer. Went home, got out of his box, unlocked it, pulled out a gun, went out in the backyard and shot himself. A lock wouldn't have helped. A lock wouldn't have helped. No, it wouldn't have. And I, I think there's a lot of things. And what 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 do there's they a, have to back that comment? What do they nothing. have statistically speaking? Zero. Zilch. Not one thing. So they hope it will stop it. Right. Uh, and if it just helps one, that, if, if it, it just helps, helps one, 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 it yeah, saves yeah. one life, right. Um, one of our members actually did, did a great speech. I, I, we should go back and try to pull it. But at the uh, La Mesa, mm-hmm. it, you know what I'm talking I about? I heard it, yep. Yeah, he just said, so he said, you know, that's the standard, you know, just one life. I mean, that's the standard. That's, that's what we're trying to base, uh, uh, you know, public policy on. And he went into saying, you know, how extreme policies, you know, could could be justified, yeah. you know, with the idea of, of saving just one life. I thought it was very articulate, and he did a really good mm-hmm. job. He usually attends the uh, – uh, the South County meeting, and I can't wait to tell him what a good job I thought he did. Anyway, we won. That was a good. That was a really good yeah. uh, 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 victory for us. Um, but it's as all victories, it's it's temporary. It's already in the rearview mirror. Oh yeah, because going. they are not going to stop. <clears throat> they're not even close. <clears throat> not even close. And then their next meeting is in late August. There's nothing. On, I don't think there's anything on the agenda that's anti-gun. Uh, we, we won't know for for a little while, but uh, I can I can almost guarantee you something's coming. Well, no, I can almost guarantee you that nothing is coming, as far as real solutions oh, for no, no, suicide no. and right. people joining gangs. So you know, imagine they, if they really went to the root of the problem and tried to find a solution. How much support they would have? None. I, no, for, for if they really went after the truth. If know, they after, if, did, right, if they correct. did, yeah, but they don't want to. No, no. I think so. I mean, you if, think so? You're such an optimist. Well, I, I think that if they came to the table, if they weren't – so what are, Tara Lawson Raymer, she's not really truly concerned about the solution. She's just anti-gun. Right. right. And if she were really truly concerned, if right. she really sat there and thought, well, gosh, what can we do to help, you know, so that people don't commit suicide? Mm-hmm. You know, 70% of the people who, you know, uh, of the – somewhere it's about 200 people per year. If 70%, it's 140 people – didn't commit suicide and use a gun. There's more more than 140 people that commit suicide every year. It's just 140 of them or so use a gun. You know, if she were really concerned about that, instead of just being concerned about being anti-gun, then there are a lot of solutions that everybody would agree on, but she doesn't care about that. Well, what about the people that commit suicide with drugs? What well, about the ones that put hoses up their tailpipe and die of asphyxiation? I, so that that's why not Two minutes. do something effective. I will bet you... That on the agenda in August, she's going to have two, three months to think about. Two months to think about. Oh yeah, and I'll bet you there will be nothing on the agenda, you know, that that everybody can agree on right. that will accomplish the same goal. Because her goal isn't to help people; it's to pull guns. Right. 
Period. See, she just it doesn't. She's just trying to find a way to eliminate guns. And if she has to pull the heartstrings of people, right, and use suicide, right, that's that's her goal. Now, one of the things that the uh, county did do uh, correctly and right is, you know, we have this new not me. Uh, California, not me, CA, not me, California is the 501c3 that helps provide funding to our not me programs, not me SD, not me right. MC, not me IE, um, which of course trains women, you know, right. uh, make sure that they get a gun, they get training, they get a CCW. Uh, the county One minute. donated $25,000 to that 501c3. And so right after I, we won and, and got the vote we wanted, I went and signed the paperwork to get the donation from the county. They didn't read it, did they? <laughs> I honestly have a feeling that at least two of them didn't read it. Yeah. So, see, you didn't think So that's I'd good care. news. See, you didn't think I'd carry these around. I know you. I, who knows what you You got yours? About. Yeah. <laughs> They're in my bag. <laughs> and I'm not going nowhere near that. So, so anyway, congratulations to Not Me California. Thank you, uh, San Diego County. Um, we are going to put that money to good use to make sure that people are, are, especially women, are trained and protected. Sounds like a Which prime. prevents gun violence, by the way. Inland Empire gun owners strive to be the ounce of prevention in the fight for your gun rights. How do they do it? They do it by fundraising and getting local pro-gun candidates elected. So you need to become a member today. Go to iegunowners.com slash join and join the growing number of responsible gun owners sleeping or stepping sleeping, stepping up to defend our Second Amendment right. That's iegunowners.com slash join right now. All right. So what do we have? They're Subscribe winners. and win. We have some winners. Subscribe and win. Subscribe to our email list and win some swag. So all you got to do is go to uh, gunownersradio.com, gunownersradio.com. Join our uh, newsletter. And uh, you'll get emails that update you on what we're doing, when the show is, all kinds of important information about uh, Second Amendment in San Diego, the Second Amendment community across Southern California, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino. Anyway, this week's winner, and you might win, by the way. If you subscribe, you might win something. This week's winner is Patrick Cole. Congratulations, Patrick. Email prizes at gunownersradio.com to claim your T-shirt or hat. Um <laughs> There you go. Nice. Congratulations, Patrick. Again, go to San Diego County Gun Owners .com or sdcgo.org and check out tomorrow night's event at the Bally High. It's called our, our Summer Fling. It's an opportunity to get together, have some food, have a drink, meet other gun owners. A couple of elected officials will probably be there. Um, Alicia will be there. I'll be there. Dave's Wait, did you say it's tomorrow? Yeah. It's Tuesday. Oh, it's Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow's Monday. Yeah, you'll be there Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Dave will be there. Dave, are you going to be there? Where? <laughs> it's okay. The that answers high. that. Oh, the Bally, Bally High, high on yeah. Tuesday. You coming to get me? Yeah, absolutely. Get to ride in a Beamer. <clears throat> Don't forget the Imperial Beach City Council meeting is August 2nd. We haven't seen the draft yet, but this is where they're going to talk about whether or not they're going to allow gun shops in Imperial Beach. So we need you to show up. Imperial Beach City Council, August 2nd. I they used uh, to were having one. a we're the, well they did used to then we're having a uh, public safety meeting mm -hmm. a second amendment related public safety reading meeting uh, hot rods and handguns in Orange County if you're listening that's also on August 2nd uh, details on the uh, or, uh, on the Orange County gun owners website it's the uh, evening 6 p.m. Um, should be extremely interesting it's going to talk about how you know crimes on the rise in Orange County. What can you do? What can you do to support the Second Amendment? What do the two have in common? What did you say about hot rods? <clears throat> hot rods and handguns is a uh, gun range in Orange County. Really? Yeah, it's very cool. Have you been there? I have. It's really nice. Very you got upscale. Hot rods? They do. Yeah, they have hot rods and handguns, both. Hmm. It's super upscale. It's like it's like the nicest. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember? Oh, what was it? Forty eight hours with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Back. Remember they went to that uh, that highfalutin gun range and it was all high tech and everything. You're it it not, reminds me. It's yeah. not forty eight hours. That was Beverly Hills. Oh, Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. That's <laughs> where he went and seen that big tall block. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was married to the Russian? Right. From exactly. Right. Yeah, so. Okay. So get your gun prom tickets. Go to gunprom.com. Don't forget. See um, how he could just tell a story and you believe it. I was rolling with it. What? Yeah. You were so off hours? on the movie. I wasn't that off. 48 hours with, with Eddie Murphy 
and Nolte in a 63, 64 <laughs> Cadillac. And Beverly Hills Cop was Eddie Murphy and – but it, Yeah, but it was <laughs> – But there was no di- 63 gun car. range in car. Beverly Hills. A whole different car. <laughs> All right, so big update. Uh, this is pretty interesting, and this is in the works. If you have been attending – our monthly meetings, then you would have seen a couple months ago a guy named Gary Gibson. He is a, an attorney who had a client, and the client um, was uh, uh, being prosecuted. He's a CCW holder. He was at a gas station, and uh, somebody got mad at him, said that, that he cut him off, and blocked him in, jumped out of his car, attacked him, um, and before he could get a hit... Um, you know, with his fist, this other guy was, you know, uh, the CCW holder, uh, surprised that he was about to get hit. You know, he was being attacked. It was by total surprise, uh, brandished, which means that he pulled from concealment, didn't actually point in because he didn't have to, because the guy who was physically assaulting him saw that he had a gun and backed way off. So, uh, the guy who attacked him called the cops, filed a report, got all, you know, is he? Uh, yeah. And uh, the CCW holder, he lost his CCW. He lost his gun. He had to go to court. It was really ugly. Gary Gibson, the attorney, who's awesome, uh, defended him successfully and got him off. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went and met with the district attorney and explained this isn't right. That this person, that he did nothing wrong. That this is exactly what he, he did, exactly what he was trained to do. Right. That he did nothing illegal. Um, it and didn't it, shoot him. It didn't shoot him. It didn't even point at him because, he, you know, he, he the attack stopped. He brandished, you know, the attack stopped. And, you know, boom, he that stopped. Be a positive. It is a positive. And what they had here was, uh, well, I'm not going to get too into it, but I, I disagree vehemently. I, this case didn't rise to the level so the, so the district attorney actually, you know, viewed it and made a decision on it. But the person, the attorney who did, the prosecutor who did, I felt was extremely wrong. Um, and but we explained, hey, look, this is how people, you know, in a, first off, in a county that had eleven hundred, that now has thirteen thousand and growing, CCWs, this is going to happen more often. More often and we not. feel that this was somebody who had no experience uh, prosecuting uh, a defensive gun use. Did he get you? a CCW back as well? We we helped him get a CCW back. Okay. Um, you know, he but he still had to pay legal fees. Um, it's kind of. I don't want to say funny, but it, it, he uh, he was trying to get his gun back, and by the time everything was said and done, it was cheaper just to buy a new gun. So when 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 we tell you when you go through a class and you hear that the gun that you use in defensive gun use, you're going to lose it, you're going to lose it. So we've had a couple of advertisers, you know, that sell like an insurance policy. He didn't have, he didn't okay. have insurance. So that he should have. Right, so that right there mm-hmm. is a prime example why you should. Exactly. USCCA would have helped. In That's fact, it. yeah, mm-hmm. USCCA would have helped. In fact, I think USCCA got involved. He, he I think he got USCCA. After. Anyway, that's not the story. Here's the no, story. I know, I know. The district attorney, we met with her, um, and she said uh, after uh, about, about two months of, you know, working things out and a little bit of back and forth and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, if you're a CCW holder and you go into a defensive gun use situation, and there is, uh, while they're investigating it to see if it needs to get prosecuted, your case will go in front of a special unit, a unit that has experience with defensive gun use. In fact, they're the unit when there's a uh, police shooting, they investigate Two minutes. to see you know, if the police did. you know. So, in other words, a CCW holder is not going to get routed in you know, like a gang member. Is that what came from this? Yes. Wow. Uh, so rather than get routed the same you know path as a gang member who shot a rival gang member, you're going to get routed into a group that's used to the legalities, the ethics, et cetera, of, of a defensive gun use. That is a huge victory. Totally. That is a huge victory. You know, you got to quit doing all these victories. <clears throat> i got to tell you, man. You're going to get Monday, in trouble. Monday, the DA said, hey, we're going to change the way we investigate CCW holders. Tuesday, the county board said, uh, yeah, we're not going to vote for these anti-gun things. 
and we're going to give your 501c3 $25,000. I mean, it was a good week. You can move to Alaska now. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any stipulations on this, or is it strictly yeah, if I know, you have a TCW? You? There's got to be a stipulation. Okay, uh, I'm just waiting. Yeah, no, it's is it's there... no, it's no, it's pretty clear cut. It's, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a pilot program, okay. uh, so they're going to launch it. But basically, if you have a CCW and you're in a defensive gun use mm-hmm. uh, situation, um, you're going to get investigated by a different unit. That's really what. It, that's it. It's pretty clear. I cut. think that is amazing. You did a great job. Yeah, it's great. Well, thank you, and, and thank you, uh, uh, DA. One minute. Stephen, she was endorsed by San Diego County Gun Owners. We're glad that she's in office. Wow. We're very thankful. See, it does that work she, when you get people in office. It does, and you know, a lot of these victories. That's not something that's you know big and sexy, but that's going to have an impact on people's life. Well, it's big and sexy to the guy that got his gun back and got his CCW. Truly. I mean, can you, if it was, I mean, he'd be he would he, he'd be he'd, in jail. He dished out tens of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars for legal issues. USCCA, folks. Yep. I think it's what ten bucks a month or some silly amount. Yes. The answer. Hey, is there a better tool that empowers a woman to defend against an attacker that's a hundred pounds bigger? Nope. That's why it's so important for women to learn how to defend themselves with the most effective self-defense tool ever invented. For women, led by women, the Not Me program is designed to help with training, purchasing a gun, and getting a concealed carry permit. And guess what? It's totally free. To sign up, go to notmesd.org. You know, it's funny. When you comment, no, mm-hmm. sound like you're 10 pounds. <laughs> you make Big, that little squeaky Biggest voice. compliment you've ever given me. I know, but you just make that squeaky little voice. <laughs> no. Nope. All right. We got a guest. Do we? Yes, sir. On the I'm line. Very interested. Uh, our next guest is Don Mann. He's a motivational speaker, a New York Times bestselling author, world class adventure competitor, and retired Navy SEAL. Don Mann, how are you, sir? Is he there? Uh, no. All right. Well, hey, I can be Don Mann. Good dude. Um, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> he's got an amazing. Uh, I'm He's got an amazing player. resume. Um, uh, I was actually really looking forward to talking to him. Yeah, you're not going to cry, are you? I might a little bit. I don't know where he went. Anyway, uh, so she looks like she's 10 pounds, is that what you said? Yeah. Or well, she sounds like she's 10 well, pounds. Well, what she did, you notice how she just goes, no. <laughs> well, I think that's supposed to. Oh, well, here, let's do some shout outs, actually. I keep forgetting. You know, you keep forgetting. I that. do. Big shout out to folks on YouTube who are following us. Mr. Knives. Mike White, G23, Thor Waldahl. I wonder if I said that right. Thor Waldahl, W-A-L-D-A-H-L. Yeah, Waldahl. Vanessa Kitty. Aw, what an adorable name. Thanks, Vanessa Kitty. And then Riding Dirty Outdoors. Thank you guys for following us. G23, suppose that's a Glock 23? That'd be my guess. Or is he playing bingo? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe he's playing bingo. (laughs) Could be. Oh. Which one's the 23? Is that a 40? Uh, is it Glock 23 or 40 cal? Oh, jeez. You know, anything other than a 9, I only have so much brain cells, you know, brain <laughs> space. Outside the, the 9 family, I don't recall. Oh, well. Are, are you ever a 40 person? Not a Glock 40. I've got a Smith & Wesson 40. Yeah, did you like it? I, You know, I like it because it was my first gun. Uh, you know, as far as uh, shooting comfort... Accur- I'm greatly accurate with it, but it's if you were just to compare it side by side with any other handguns I have, it's not my favorite, but yeah. because it was my first gun, it's got a special place in my heart. G23 is 40 caliber. It is 40. Yeah. Yep. Mm. 40 caliber guys used to be all arrogant, too. They used to think they were better than everybody. It's a dying breed. It, I think it's a dead breed. I wonder if you <laughs> can still, if you're listening, is it, is it? let us know if it's hard to find 40 cal or not. I'd, I'd be interested to hear. Because it's pretty much, it's, it's, it was going the way of the dodo uh, years ago. When they came out with the 10 mil. So, you know, they need. Hey, Don is on now. Oh. Don's on. Don's right. on. There we go. Even better. Hey, hey Don. Hey, Don. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. We were just telling everybody you are a motivational speaker, New York Times bestselling author, world class adventure competitor, and of course, a retired Navy SEAL. When did you serve in the Navy? What years were what what era were you? Well, I had the easy era. I was seventy seven to ninety eight. Seventy seven to ninety eight. 
And how? Yeah. Tell us about what was it like serving in uh, serving as a seal in the eighties and the nineties? That wasn't an, a, an easy era. Was there ever an easy era for for seals? I mean, you guys had there was a lot that went on for, with you guys in the in the eighties and the nineties. What what was it like serving as a seal? Well, you know, I loved every second of it, and we thought we were very very busy, and we were, but um, it got much busier once the two wars occurred. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I would like, yeah, I loved it. It was, it was so fun. <laughs> I love how calm he is about. It. You know, it got a lot busier when we had those uh, wars. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure things got pretty spicy back then. So you served on 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 Dev Group or, or SEAL Team Six, and and yeah. you, you served in the 80s and 90s. I mean, that's it. it it's what it started in the 80s, right? I mean, were you were you uh, are you a plank holder for for Team Six? It's so funny. No, it, uh, it wasn't a plank owner, but um, so when when Seal Team Six was created, uh, Richard Marcinko had a group. You know, he got about a hundred guys together, and um, and he formed Six. When I got there, those guys were basically all still there, so I, I think I consider myself second generation. Now, what, now what when you back then? I'm sure it was. It was fairly unknown. Like, what what attracted you? You know, now everybody knows what it is, and there are books and movies and everything. But what attracted you? You're in your your SEAL career. What attracted you to to going into Team Six? Well, you know, I actually, no offense to the guys who didn't want to go there, but I don't know why any SEAL didn't want to go there because if you're if you're a SEAL. Back then, and SEAL Team 6 is really a no. Even we at the regular SEAL teams didn't know what SEAL Team 6 was all about. It was that secretive. Well, and so that's I, that, and that's the that's actually the entire foundation of my question. Like my understanding is, it was so secretive. Like what what drove you? Like how did they sell you on it? If you, if you didn't really know what was going on, how did they sell you on it? I think it was because of the secrecy and and the worldwide mission. Hmm. So I was initially at SEAL Team One. Um, but when I first heard a little bit about SEAL Team 6, I was in Bud's still, you know, the training. And um, and I remember looking out my window, and we're all looking out our window because they told us, you know, we heard there was some SEAL Team 6 there using the dive tower. And I just wanted to get a glimpse of what those guys looked like. And I looked out my window, and these guys, they looked like a bunch of fit civilians. You know, they had longer hair, and they're, they're just kind of hanging out. And... Um, and they were talking about going out the night before, just having too many drinks. And they looked like just a bunch of, like, baseball players almost, you know. And um, But that that was what it was all about. You had to fit in, like, be the gray man. You had to fit mm-hmm. in society without drawing attention to themselves. But then knowing, you know, we all had great training in SEAL teams. But just knowing SEAL Team 6 had all the more training and all the more sophisticated and high-end training. And, um, and you know, West Coast, we had the west side of the world, still teams one, three, and five. And teams two, four, and eight at back then had the eastern side of the world, but still team six had a worldwide capability, uh, unlimited budget, and, um, and really some of the top guys from every team was chosen to go to SEAL Team 6. So everything about SEAL Team 6 appealed to me because it was – the SEAL te- the regular SEAL teams were great. It's not a great name, but w- uh, what people refer to the regular SEAL teams as the vanilla teams. It's not a great name for it, but SEAL Team 6 was the secretive one, the one where there was a lot more training. Everything was much more dangerous. And um, instead of, you know, instead of just, um, for instance, skydiving uh, in the regular teams, SEAL Team 6, you're doing high-altitude, high-opening pay hose you know, at 30,000 feet. The jumps were at 30,000 feet, some of them. And um, instead of just diving in the middle of the night, you're diving, you know, on a pole. Everyone's diving together, and you're doing four-hour oxygen dives. Everything was just more intense. There wasn't any dry fire, really. There wasn't any, like, uh, practice training. Everything was live fire and, and real and and potentially dangerous, you know, potentially very, well, very dangerous. Did you ever get... Partially in and say, ooh, wait a minute. This may not be what I really had in mind. 
actually, it was the other way around. Um, I was so grateful every moment wow. that I found SEAL Team and SEAL Team 6, and um, I just felt like it was the absolutely best place for me to be. That's interesting. I never, right. I never doubt, I never doubted it wasn't the right decision to go that route. How do you do? You feel like the culture has changed with uh, with uh, uh, special ops, yeah, specifically Navy special ops. Do you feel like the culture has changed post nine eleven? It feels like there's it's almost two two services. You know, the folks that served after nine eleven and the ones that served before. Have is it? What, what, how can you can you comment on that? Well, I, I do think it changed good and bad. Um, you know, the guys after 9-11, I mean, most of them all have a lot, a lot, a lot of real-world warfighting experience. The guys before 9-11, it was rare. We, we, we called it, we were chasing the rainbow. We were looking for the action. We had to chase the action down, and we wanted the action. Uh, after 9-11, it, you know, it was nonstop. So that, that's one difference. So after 9-11, the guys were much more experienced than we were. And um, before 9-11, you know, we trained more than we fought, really. And uh, so that, that's one side of it. The, that's a good side of it, I guess. The bad side of it, I guess, is, and, and I only know this from talking to guys who are currently in or just got out, the the a little disappointed well basically with the administration the chief of staff you know the the, the pentagon but two minutes um, it, it's kind of watered down it, it found its way down to the seal teams that i'm not saying the seal teams have gone in that direction that the regular military has gone but you know the guys do come from society and they are influenced by what's going on in, in our country and um, which which I'm totally against, 100 percent against. And you know, there there are there are um, times when I've heard, you know, people question, "Oh, chief, you know, I don't I don't really feel like doing that. Why do I have to do that?" Jeez. And um, you know, back in my time, that would you'd get your teeth bashed in. I was just going to say, didn't question things, you know. And and now you know, kids grow up in a different society than we did, and it's. Um, it, it's not as – there's a part of it that's not as hardcore for those type of people who are like that. And, and fortunately for the teams, the teams, we, we don't get much of that. But I, I do hear – and I didn't experience it. But I do hear people are kind of frustrated that um, some of the guys are like that now. And it comes down from the Pentagon. Oh, it stems down from White House. It comes oh, yeah. down from people in our, in our country. It's right. just who – getting now and um and it's not I'm, i don't want to use the word woke for the for the teams but i mean when you have to stand down for any even for a half hour to learn how to talk to transgender or or people like that in the teams when you have to stand down be, for, for training for that those causes and our I mean, enemies no and our enemies are watching this my god they're laughing at yes, us yes they are i mean Don, can we get you? Hey, can we get you to hang for another minute? Sure, sure. All right, drop Thanks. down. Give me ten push-ups, <laughs> and we'll come back in a second. Hey, a lot of companies waste an enormous amount of money on marketing. The design is excellent, the photos are beautiful, and your website looks great, but it's just not getting customers. Why? Because you don't have the words that make people buy. That's right. But now you can fix that with Sage Street. Sage Street can help you find the words that make it easy for your customers to understand what you do and how to buy from you. Stop wasting money today and schedule a call. Getting started is super easy. Visit sagetree.com and check or click on the schedule an appointment button. That's sagetree.com and click on that schedule a call button right now. That's right. If you have a business and you have a website, go to sagetree.com right now and just schedule an appointment to talk to them because they will do you good. We, we're real happy with them here at Gun Owners Radio. And, of course, yep. San Diego County Gun Owners, they're the best. Okay, we're talking to Don Mann. He's a motivational speaker, New York Times bestselling author, world-class adventure competitor, and a retired, retired Navy SEAL. I think I could sit here and talk to you about being a SEAL. I think the Navy is just about the most fascinating career that anybody can have, and one of the most fascinating things you can do in the Navy 
is be a SEAL. So I'm pretty sure, Don, I could probably sit here and talk to you about it for about the next six hours. But I want to talk to you about yeah, – that's – it's like a, it's one of the many jewels in your crown. Yeah. I mean, you you've had uh, quite a life, my friend. That's pretty fantastic. What what's your what project has most of your focus right now? Well, I'm uh, I'm on a, a, a show, a TV show, where actually a lot of what I learned in the field teams I use on this show. And a friend of mine's a TV producer and director, and. Um, he said, someday I want to make a show, and I want you training people. I want you to train people how to shoot guns, how to do intense physical training, how to navigate, how to do all these things you've learned as a SEAL and as an adventure athlete, and let's put together something. And then a couple of years ago, he said, yeah, I want to get it together. We're going to get some sponsors, and I want the show called Surviving Man. Uh-huh. And I was thinking, well, this will never happen. But it did happen. And we just came back from Belize a couple days ago wow. filming on a dive boat where we actually had the guys, um, you know, they did PT with the scuba tanks on the back. And there was some, basically some tears with the participants. <laughs> and um, they dropped them off in the middle of the night in rubber boats, and they had to disable a drug boat, a supposed drug boat, by disabling the screws and swimming underwater and tangling these nets, fish nets around the screws and swimming back, back to the middle of the night. These are things these guys have never dreamed of doing before. And then we had, um, there was a chemical warfare agent supposedly on one of the boats. We dropped them off in the middle of the night again, and they had to swim up in the middle of the night on scuba tanks. And with these scuba jets, they're called, where you hold on to them and, and you swim underwater real fast. It's almost like James Bond type stuff. And um, they, they uh, boarded the boat, got the chemical warfare off, and they completed some very successful missions and, and high-end missions for civilians. So I'm doing that still and, and wow. training people with weapons and survival. So, okay, so and, the uh, wait, wait, before we, so the folks on your show, these are just civilians that, that say, hey, I want to try this, and it's it's like a teacher and a tax preparer and a garbage man or whatever, and you teach them how to, how to do, like, you know, these kind of special ops things. Is that the idea? Yes. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Where, and, do you, um, where do you see this? Well, it's on the Pursuit TV channel. It just got picked up by Pursuit TV, and uh, it's on Roku um, and Amazon TV. I think it's now in 34 million homes in the U.S., and, and it's up in Canada as of last week. It's all over Canada now. But it's, it's, um, it's a, a company called American Stories, and um, a, a friend of mine has this company. He's got 10, 10 I think, programs on it now. But Surviving Man's the, like, the, the 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 one that's doing really really well on all of his shows, and um, it's on Pursuit TV. And uh, actually, Ted Nugent, who's somebody um, heard of him, I, I respect a great deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he he. Uh, I, I followed him when I was a young kid. I used to just PT to his music, you know, Stranglehold <laughs> and Cat Scratch Fever and all that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, and then he. I wrote a book called The Modern Day Gunslinger. I'd written quite a few books, but somebody had given him that book. And he sent me a whole package of, Don, this is the real deal. This is a great book. I love it. And he sent me all these pictures of him playing guitar and head for president and all that. <laughs> so um, so I wanted him to be our co-host, and I couldn't get in contact with him. So it's kind of funny the way everything turned out because now he just he has a TV show called Call of the Wild, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. And he's had it for about 20 years. And um, and he just moved over to Pursuit TV at the same time we just moved over. And he's going to promote Surviving Man, and I'm going to promote Ted Nugent's show. That's I'm awesome. so That's honored awesome. and proud to do. <laughs> Uncle yeah. Ted. I'd li- I'm hoping he'll be my co-host one of these days as well. Yeah, have you, you haven't met him yet, though? No, I've never met him. Yeah. Nope. He yeah. will. I met him at an NRA convention. I went up and said hello, and he, on my name tag, he saw that I was from California. And uh, he said, uh, "He said, oh, you're in the belly of the beast, brother." And then kept walking, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was great. I, I thought it was awesome. Um, so you have written a lot of books. What 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 inspired you uh, to to start writing? As a what did you first off? Did you, when, when did you start? Were you were you writing when you were active duty, or did it happen after? And what inspired you? Well, um, I definitely didn't do any writing on active duty. You know, I would do people's evaluations, and that was. 
enough for me. I mean, trying to get an evaluation of somebody. I was not a writer. Basically, I still don't think I'm a real writer. But um, I, I, I didn't plan on being a writer. I, I, I almost failed out of high school English. I, I don't like the, the sitting behind a computer or a notepad writing. But um, I was I was pretty much in the top tier there of the adventure racing world, and I was racing with the top competitors in the world, all over the world, doing these 500 and 600 mile, 10 day nonstop competitions. Well, physically, it was the hardest thing I've ever done because in the teams, I never pushed myself so hard where I would hallucinate, bleed, or pass out. And this is what adventure racing did. It's, it's a sport. They no longer have the real big ones anymore. But um, that's what they did have them when I was competing in them. And we'd go to the Himalayas or the Ecuador or somewhere in South Africa. Somewhere it would be really, really difficult to train. And for 10 days, pretty much nonstop, we'd sleep an hour and a half to two hours a day. But you would swim, paddle, bike, climb, pretty much nonstop. And you finish the race, you know, 10 or 11 days, this 500, 600-mile rugged, rugged course. So I got into that as an athlete, and then I, I was teaching people how to do this quite a long, quite quite a bit. And um, then, so instead of just teaching it, I, I started an adventure racing academy. And then I was putting on, I actually put on more of these multi-sport events than anybody in the world at one time. And um, I, I just loved it. I just loved every bit of it. And it took over my life, to tell you the truth. You know, so, I, you know, Don. I, I, I can see, you know, finishing a race like this, or like what you just described. I can see that accomplishment is is got to be amazing. That's got to be an amazing feeling. But when you're in day four, five, or six, and you're hallucinating and passing out, bleeding and bleeding, how do you how do you keep going? Well, you just it's not an option to quit. It's like being this, going through buds. You just know that quitting's not an option, and and the you just get so much out of life in such a short period of time because in those ten or eleven days you're doing it with teammates. You have four or five people on a team, but in that time frame, usually someone is screaming at somebody else. Someone's yelling at someone else. Someone's crying because they're so hurt. Someone's passed out, and you're so you're a medic and you're a mentor and you're, you're the trainer and you're also very, very happy that you, you know, you just summited this 22,000 foot peak and you still have five days to, to, to go or, um, and the paddling and just being out in the middle of places where people really don't see because you're way out in the middle of nowhere on all of these big, big races. And, um, I, I just love that. And when we had down times in the field, you know, I was a training officer at a couple of SEAL teams, and um, when we, I, what I would do for leave, I, I wouldn't take vacations. I would go do these big, difficult races when when, when we could, when I could. Okay, I you can do ten pushups. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably can. I think you can do ten. Push-ups. We never did ten pushups. There's always much more, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you, I'm, I'm just curious, when you were hallucinating, when you were pushing yourself so hard that you were hallucinating, like what did you see? Like, what does that mean? You were hallucinating. Well, for instance, uh, let me think. I think it was Patagonia, Argentina was one of my favorite hallucinations. <laughs> uh, I was I was in my canoe, and um, we had gone about 200 or so miles and climbing, um, climbing these mountain peaks, paddling, going through, through the uh, woods and the jungles with carrying boats, and it was getting very, very difficult. And you'd look down, you'd see a rock in the middle of the night, and you realize it's a turtle, or you saw a turtle, you saw a rock. But I remember paddling, and I was saying, stroke, stroke, stroke. And you can almost sleep while you're saying that, kind of like in Buds. But then I stopped abruptly paddling, and Mark, the guy behind me, he said, Don, what's the matter? And I started telling him what I saw, but I stopped talking as soon as I heard myself because it sounded so crazy. But what I saw was a beautiful, full-dressed, Japanese woman with her full dress white kimono uh, dress on. Two minutes. Makeup and her hair. And she just came out, out out of the water right in front of my canoe, and I didn't want to hit her. And so I had to stop real quickly paddling so I didn't crash into her. Well, that was thoughtful. And what a gentleman. Oh, yeah, always a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you, and I apologize, but there, I, I swear we, we should we got to have him back on. This is, he's he's a fascinating interview. You got to start reading his books. One last one last question because we only have a couple minutes. It, uh, this came in from one of the listeners. If there's one nugget of wisdom you want listeners to take away, what is it? Well, you know, I've been asked that many, many times, and I, I have it narrowed down. I, I get calls all the time. How do I be a SEAL or how do I be a ranger or, or a firefighter or something? All you have to do is four things. A day. One a minute. Four simple things. One is every day do something to make yourself stronger. And don't expect someone to hand you that on a silver platter. Figure out every day make yourself stronger. CrossFit, push-ups, gym, whatever it is, number one. Number two, every day do something to make yourself faster. If you're a runner, do fartleks, or speed work, or a swimmer, do sprints. If you can do 100 sit-ups in two minutes, do 110 in two minutes. But every day do something to make yourself faster. More importantly is every day do something to make yourself smarter. So if you do want to be a SEAL, learn where SEALs are operating now, over 90 countries in the world. Learn how to shoot weapons and go skydiving and learn to dive. But most importantly, number four, is every day do something good for somebody. Because if you do something good for your teammate, for your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, or the neighbor, or somebody you don't know, every day, when you go for selection or when you go up for a job, you just might be the strongest, fittest, smartest person in that arena and the best teammate a person can have because you're so used to doing good for people. I'm telling you what. That's awesome advice. That's one out cool. of four. I'm loving Thank it. You. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're 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 at one out of four. I'm one out of four. I was just hoping I'd get one. I'm gonna see if I get. I'm gonna try to. I, Don, I'm gonna do. I'm doing four out of four tomorrow. Oh, good. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Hey, and thank you so Alicia much. Alicia and I are gonna watch. There you go, Don. <laughs> if is there a, is there a website or how can people learn more about you? I do have a website and it's um, www.usfrogman with two n. Dot com, like Frogman, maybe Frogman. You but got it. U.S. Frogman with two ends.com. Thank you, Don. You've been wonderful. And God bless you, uh, and thank, thank you for your me. service. Uh, thank you. Thank one, you for having me. One out of four. I'm, one out I'm, of four? I'm going. Yeehaw! Gun prom tickets are on sale. You need to join San Diego County gun owners and the rest of the Second Amendment crowd at the town and country in Mission Valley. Get your fancy gear on and come on down. And we are going to have a blast. Make sure you believe in the self-defense and the Second Amendment rights. Second Amendment dinner is coming up September 16th. Get your tickets now and reserve your spot for a night with people. Great food, drinks, all for a great cause. In fact, you can even get a table and invite a bunch of your friends that are either in guns or not. But go to gunprom.com to get your tickets now. Buy a table and bring your friends and family. That's gunprom.com. And buy your tickets today. Gunprom.com. Let's see. We we already have some of the gun shops that are going to be there. Mm. Yeah. Discount Gun Mart is going to be there. Cool. Um, we got Fallbrook Guns is going to be there. They committed. Yeah. Poway Weapons and Gear committed. Right. Um, the Gun Range San Diego committed. Oh, good. Um, we got all kinds of. It's it's going to be a it's going to be another great dinner. I'm telling you, do not miss this one. It's going to be great. Give, and the giveaway or the raffle yep. prizes. Yep. Holy moly! Yeah, well, that's that's. And I like the way you do it. If you want one specific item, right. You can put all your raffle tickets in there. Put all your eggs in that one basket. I have won <laughs> every year. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it's it's going to be a really, really good time. It always is. I really like uh, this late September, October time period yeah. that we changed it to. I think it's better than the right. spring. It's not hot. Yeah. It's good. I think it's better than the spring. So we got some uh, famous uh, faces that are coming. Uh, the Penn Patriot. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Petrolino, the Gabagoo Patriot. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody else is slipping my mind. Who else is coming? You remember Rich? Other people are coming. Rich. I'll be there. Alicia's, Alicia's going to be there. They'll be there. There you go. I'll be there. So go to gunprom.com. See Dave Stahl. There you go. It is tux. Are you wearing a tuxedo? No. See if I'm wearing a tux this time. You thinking about it? I don't know. You think I should wear a tux? I think so. The, the only Tails thing is- and everything. <laughs> But you got to wear a cowboy hat. And a top hat. No, I'm wearing a top hat. And a monocle. I'm going to wear a car shirt. <laughs> I'm going to get two monocles. That's I how think you should. Get. Wear two monocles. Well, you got the goatee. Why did, I wonder what he's bringing back the monocle. I don't know. Well, you should start it. I'm bringing Goes back with, How many monocle. watches are you going to wear? 
all the way up. I, I, I wear two two watches. Here's what I here's what I'm going with. One on each. Two arm. watches, a monocle, a belt, and suspenders. Oh, that's yeah. my new look. And then you got to open the jacket and have all the rest of your watch. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's, get, to, are let's we, get to Are work. we on the air? Yeah, I think Let's just on. edit all this out. It's yeah. not going to make it in here. Okay, um, our next segment is Stump My Nephew. Sam, the gunman, who's my nephew, is Indeed. particularly good at gun trivia. And uh, he is, uh, uh, we found that out a few years ago. And so far, I think he's completely and totally undefeated. He's never gotten one wrong. <laughs> Well, maybe he's going to argue one. with that. Yeah, he might have gotten one or two wrong. But anyway, he does a fantastic job. So if you send us a gun trivia question and we, we read it on the air, you'll get a hat or a shirt. If you stump my nephew, then you'll get free tickets to gun prom. Free tickets to gun prom. So without further ado, Sam, are you there? Yeah, how are you guys? Good, man. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. All right. <clears throat> um, you're up in the uh, Great White North, aren't you? Uh, something like that. I'm in Wisconsin right now, watching the sun set over a beautiful Placid Hill Lake. Oh, uh, got some newskies. Mm. Absolutely beautiful up there. Did you guys go to a? Did you guys do a fish fry there on Friday? There, did you? Uh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> How was it? It was pretty good. Oh, good. Look at that. That's a picture of the lake. He's oh right wow! Look Isn't at that beautiful. That. That's a picture of the That's lake. Gorgeous. Oh, so jealous. Okay, so let's do this thing. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, but before that, did you guys just have Don Shipley on? Not Don Shipley. We had Don Shipley on about six, eight months ago. We had uh, uh, Don, Don Mann. With Different two Don. Ends. Okay. Different Don. Sorry. But, but both, he'd be somebody you'd be interested both in. Both SEALs. Mm-hmm. He was also a SEAL. Don Mann. Do you know about Don Shipley? Um, yeah, he's he's something else. He's something else. I interviewed him uh, six, eight months ago, something like that? Yep. Yeah, I, I I got all addicted to his show. Did I turn you on to that show, or did you find him? You did, yeah. Okay, yeah, I like Don. Both these guys, Don Man, they're kind of the same. Yeah. two sides of the same coin. Uh, man's crazy. You know, no, man's you know I mean? crazy. Man is seriously crazy. Yeah. He anyway. All right. Okay. Here's the question. Okay, this comes from John. Oh, you want to read it? I can. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I go can ahead. Read. You read it. Can well, you read? I went to, well, I went to public school. Do you want to borrow best. my glasses? Do you Not need bad. your monocle? <laughs> I did. We should get her a monocle. <laughs> Mm, won't right, come, go for it. have to match my dress. All right, so this is from John from Daly City, and his question is, what made the China Lake Grenade Launcher special? Mm, mm. What made the China Lake Grenade Launcher special? Don from John, sorry, John from Daly City. Uh, what made the China Lake Grenade Launcher special? Thanks very much for writing in, Don. Uh, John, excuse me. <laughs> sorry about that. Thanks very much for writing in, John. Um, the China Lake grenade launcher was an experimental prototype grenade launcher made during the Vietnam War um, with the idea of supplanting the M79. Um, now, if you're familiar with the M79, um, it, it's it's very iconic. It's a single-shot break-action grenade launcher, 40 millimeter. It works basically like a giant shotgun. You You load a shell in, you get one shot, you fire it. It's got a leaf sight on the top. It's pretty simple. Um, the China Lake grenade launcher was like a pump action shotgun. It held three rounds, uh, same 40 millimeter chambering. Um, and the idea behind it was to multiply the amount of firepower available uh, in a in a rifle squad without having to uh, call for fire from uh, from like a mortar team or something like that. And uh, unfortunately, because it was so heavy and and mechanically complex, it was just deemed unnecessary and, and too unwieldy for field use. So they stuck with the M79 and then eventually the M203 and then M320 under barrel models. That's actually not correct. Now, uh, 10, 15 <laughs> years ago, that would have been correct. But in this day and age, the reason uh, what made it special is uh, just that it exists and everybody's a little special. That's what made it special. Oh, so, yeah, you. Yeah, 2023. You're, you're but, yanking my chain a little yeah, bit. In 2023, <laughs> that's the answer. Before, but hey, five years ago, you'd have been right on. But here, now. Here's the bonus question. Everybody. Where did the name <laughs> come from? China Lake Grenade Launcher. It was developed at China Lake Naval Weapons Station out in, well, I want to say out west, but it's east of you. Um, no. it, in, in the desert somewhere between California and Nevada and Utah, somewhere in there. There you go. 
Excellent job. He didn't miss a he, lick. I know. It's no. like he, it's like he read it. It's like he read it. Like he he read does the, that, are you sure you don't send these to him? No, I don't. I, I, I In fact, I take great pride in, in trying to stump him. Um, I might, we're, we're not, I don't even think we should read it. I mean, he basically just said it. Well, yeah, there's no sense reading he it. He got it all. Yeah. And how do you know about this thing? Uh, that's that's one of those weird special um, historical curiosities that it uh, that you have. Know, you just it's it's hard to forget about once yeah. you once you know about now, it. Do you do you search out this stuff? I mean, do you look for oddities in 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 firearms and what have you? Um, yeah, you 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 know you kind of get into a mood, you get the itch, and and you work your way down a rabbit trail of of weird. Uh, dead end developments that never saw the light of day, um, and uh, so that that happens to be one of them. Um, of course, it's it's pretty uh, pretty special, and as I said, you you don't easily forget about a pump action repeating grenade yeah. launcher. And what, that would be pretty cool. What was the uh, what, what was the M seventy nine right? The right. grenade launcher. What was the, what was its nickname, Sam? Um, people called it the bloop gun or That's the thumper right. after the sound it made. Yep. Will you stop? <laughs> Could you imagine the recoil on that? It'd be a little. Is there a lot of recoil on an M seventy nine, Sam? Well, I've never fired one, but I have it on good authority that the recoil was fairly substantial. Um, it, it's got a pretty thick butt. Two on minutes. The back of the stock. Okay, if he um, says and, substantially, then it must be a killer. The Terminator used one. Hmm. That's true. Oh, uh, was that was that what that was? Yeah, remember? No. Uh, yeah, when he was okay, he was in the back of what kind of truck? That was a uh, Toyota Tacoma. You're guessing. It was a freaking uh, Ford Courier. Oh, really? With a camper shell. Why do you know that? 19. That's not trivia. It is. It has wheels. <laughs> That's trivial. Hey, That's not trivia. I'm, I'm like Sam. Not as smart, but when it comes to vehicles. All right. Well, we don't have time for you to talk about your blog post, but uh, go to the blog post either on San Diego County Gun Owners, right. Inland Empire, or Orange County Gun Owners. Check out the blog post. Awesome job, Sam. Awesome job, man. Serious. As Talk always. to you next week. Enjoy the, the, lake. Uh, the lake. Thanks for watching this episode from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns and the Second Amendment. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self-defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time, or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 96.1, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just do a search for Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Don't forget to support our sponsors. Click on the links in the show notes and support the businesses that support your Second Amendment rights. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.